That says we're live, but give me a sec. I'm gonna say, oh yep, this says we're live on Twitch. So, greetings, movie lovers and comic lovers. Welcome to episode thirty-eight of the Cross Media Show here on the Penultimate Conquest. Today's topic of discussion is the Venom Let There Be Carnage review. Before we get into our discussion, we got a little bit of housekeeping to do. If you're watching this on YouTube, consider like. Uh, Consider dropping a like and a sub, and don't forget to hit that bell for notifications for all of our shows like The Penultimate Game Show, Anime Nation, Marvel Mondays Initiative, and my show, Stats on Stats. If you're watching this on Twitch and have Amazon Prime, you have Prime Gaming, which means you have one free sub to give out. We'd love if you gave it to us, but if not, it's all good. No worries. This week on Pen, we have, tomorrow, a Back for Blood stream with Ruben. And then also on Wednesday, we have the penultimate conquest presents Mario Pro Golf Summer 2021. Sorry, Autumn 2021 Tournament Cup Extravaganza. And that will be on Wednesday. With me today, we are joined by the man who loves Spider-Man probably more than me. Eric again. Eric, how are we doing today? Hello, I'm doing well. How are you? I am wonderful. And for our second guest, we have the best daddy by far, Kale Ryder. Kale, how we doing? I still have my trophy. I'm doing you still good. have your trophy? What are you doing? I need to come take a picture with that trophy. <laughs> the trophy that I bought and made myself, yes, I still have that trophy. <laughs> <laughs> so, today's topic, we're going to be discussing, you know, that one movie that came out that we didn't think we'd get a sequel to after that uh, end credit scene with the awful wig on Woody Harrelson. Were you guys excited when um, Venom 2 was announced? No. No? I mean... No, I was. No. It was, it was a safe bet that Venom 2 was happening. Well, because well yeah. The first one made a lot of money. The first one did make a lot. Of, how much money did the first one... Like $800... $3 trillion. Million. It's the highest grossing movie ever made. God dang uh then i'm sure it made a billion pretty sure let's see i'm looking i'm looking it up right now we said that yeah we did 856 856 and it had a budget of 100 million to 116 million so it did pretty well yes and i remember seeing the first one in theaters and i i really liked it it was uh it was a very good film you know i i would have liked it a little bit better if it was rated r but they pushed the boundaries a little bit with the PG-13. And I mainly say that I liked, I would have liked it a little bit better if it was R, just so we could get a little more gruesome with it. Not for the language factor or anything like that. I remember walking out of the theater because um, going, okay, that happened. Uh, I did not think it was very good. I didn't like it that much. I thought the Venom parts itself were good. The only good part of the movie was when Venom was actually doing stuff. But other than that, did not think it was great. So going into this, when they said Carnage, like at the post credit scene, when he said there's going to be Carnage, I'm like, okay, Carnage is going to be in the next movie. That's exciting. One of my favorite Spider-Man villains. Um, and so, yeah, this movie happened. It did. So um, I'll, we'll go ahead and just give our initial thoughts on the film before we go into a spoiler territory. Overall, what did you think? I do not consider this to be an actual movie. Okay. Unlike some people who say who their reviews are simply Venom 2 was a movie. I refute that statement, say it's not a movie. It's just a series of events that happens and leads to, I don't know, uh, spousal abuse, I'm going to say. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, that, that kind of happens in the film. Uh, Eric, what about you? What were your initial thoughts on the film? I will say this movie is fine, but it is leaps and bounds better than the first movie for me. Like, okay. I thought the first movie was a bore fest. This one actually was quickly moving. I enjoyed that part of it. So, yeah, it, it was fine. Improvement. That's what it was needed. It improved right. on the first one. So. I, I will say that this movie was a, definitely an improvement on the uh, on the first one. I wish it would have been a tad longer. That's I have a few I have very few complaints with the film. 
and one of them is the 90 minute runtime. I feel like it, it could have been a little bit longer, you know, stretched out a few things. But overall, yeah. I enjoyed Can it. Can you explain anything that happened? That, that, yeah, it could, it could have. Um, but I, I'll say that, you know, I enjoyed it. I got I feel like I got my money's worth to go see it. I had a good uh, I had a good time in the theater watching it. So. Yeah, overall, I think it was a good movie. I was drunk when I saw it. Well, you and I were originally going to go see it, but I had uh, yeah. banking issues. Yeah. And then <laughs> and then later that night, I uh, went to go see it anyways. And I went to the bar that was next door to the movie theater. So. I was like, I'm going dr- to drink before I watch this. And that was that was the uh, only good decision I made that night. So were there were there anything in was there anything in the film you were expecting to see but didn't actually get? Mm, give me a sec. Yeah. Uh, more carnage. Yeah. Like carnage. Like, like I said, like one of my favorite Spider-Man villains, a big villain, but was definitely just thrown away, kind of. Mm-hmm. Had really cool scenes, but Carnage was definitely underutilized in this movie. Especially like if the movie is like that, there'd be Carnage. Carnage is barely in the movie, honestly. Yeah. Do you think if the movie would have been a just, you know, twenty minutes longer? Because the original yeah. runtime for the first film was an hour and fifty two minutes. Well, I think the issue was like, you know, it's a double edged sword of having an hour and thirty minute movie. A lot of people saw that as a good thing. Like it was in, it was out. Mm-hmm. You told the story you need to, but you didn't get a lot and it moved very quickly. Like how all, are we going into spoiler stuff right now? Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and throw up the spoiler warning. We're going to go ahead and dive into all the spoilers. Like, I think the fact that carnage, all this carnage stuff happens in one night is wild. That is a, that is a tag. Like, it's like carnage, like comes in, then he goes out. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Cause I mean, at the end of the day, the story was, was about Eddie and Venom. Yeah. Still coexisting with one another. Like, I think that is the story of the film. Carnage is just a plot point, really. And was just oh. take, taken care of so easily. Correct me if I'm wrong, because you might know this off the top of your head, because I'm having trouble remembering it. When we first meet Carnage in like the comics in the 90s, mm-hmm. it wasn't like the Eddie and Venom were having, you know, did I say Carnage? I'm in Venom. If I did, uh, when we met Venom in the 90s and Todd McFarlane's run, Eddie and Venom didn't have like the conversations in their head, right? It was just Eddie was out doing what he wants. He wanted to get back at Peter Parker. That's the whole thing. Carnage or Venom never really had conversations. Yeah, I think because it, it, it's it'd been hard probably with so much text bubbles. I don't mm-hmm. remember in the beginning them like talking with one another. I just know that they were a unity. And like yeah. when Venom would come out, that's when, you know, he would yeah. talk and like he was talking to Eddie inside or something like that. Um, but yeah, this one. Because these are two different characters, and I think you had to have that inner monologue stuff, which yeah. for me, like in the beginning of the movie, I thought it was fine, but like it got old really quickly. The bickering uh, felt a little yeah. too weird for me. Kale, what do, what do you think? Uh, oh, it's... I feel like they did every decision in this game was made in po- or in this game in this movie was made in post like all the bickering and stuff like clearly the, like even as starting out there's like like fucking Cletus class Cassidy references that they talked about their fathers being abusive but like that's nowhere in the fucking movie like there's just so much weird dialogue that alludes to like there's there, there's like a two hour cut of this movie somewhere with more exposition and things spelled out but like yeah just like just like them bickering just seems like it was like no we're actually just going to focus on their relationship in this because it'll play better for some reason they thought it would play better if it was just about them them being a couple instead of you know them realizing that they're the superior symbiote even though because that was like a theme of the first one where it's just like venom is like the shitty symbiote (laughs) yeah the the bickering just got old and I, I think you're right where it was like a lot of this, the conversations were done kind of after because Venom's voice is done by T- uh, Tom Hardy as well. So, you know, he had to go in there and like get in the studio and actually do the 
voice rec- or voiceovers or if that's the proper term for that. Yeah, well, the the worst is when it's Venom on the outside and then Eddie's the inner monologue. So, you know, like all of that was done. Like I'll give it to Tom Hardy. Most of that dialogue at the end. For what he like for what he's handed, he does a good job with it, in my opinion. Yeah, but that's that's when you have a very high caliber actor, just like Woody Harrelson did a tremendous performance in this movie. But (laughs) don't don't say Tom Hardy's a high caliber actor because Ruben might come in and yell at us. He he just might. Uh, I'm sorry. He says the fire rises and then he kills his friend. That's true. Um, so we we got into the a little bit of the origin with uh, Venom or not Venom uh, Carnage, which right off of the Marvel 101 on Marvel dot com. Uh, Carnage was once a serial killer known as Quidus Cassidy and became Carnage after merging with the offspring of an alien symbiote called Venom during a prison outbreak and that the symbiote amplified his psychotic nature, making him even less mentally stable than he had been previously and therefore even more dangerous. Did we get that vibe from this or did it just feel like he was still the same Cletus Cassidy we saw in the prison cell? No, they were both mentally unstable to begin with. They didn't they didn't amplify each other, just made just made him stronger. That was it. What about you? In Eric? a tornado. I, I yeah, I think the very beginning scene when Carnage comes out and he fights in the prison, I thought was the best part probably of the movie. It's like even though like they PG thirteened it up, Carnage was like going crazy on and like going to the end of the movie, I don't like how they made it seem like Oh, look, they're not compatible enough. I'm like, actually, no. The reason why they're so great is like they're the perfect compatibility. Like, yeah, I was just going to say, I think in the comics, more... like Carnage and Cletus Cassidy are like perfect for one another. So that's why like they're so deadly. And in this movie, they try to say, oh, look, they're not that perfect for one another. So I, I'm just like, ah, OK. Um, so I didn't like the... Carnage's voice either. I didn't care for it. I like Woody. I know Woody Harrelson did the voice and, you know, with the cartoons and stuff, I'm expecting Carnage to have like that high nasally, like whiny, psychotic voice. And no, it's just like, I'm just going to do a deeper voice than Venom. I'm like, ah, okay. That it, that was also another complaint of mine. Like it just didn't fit. It didn't feel like Carnage. No. But the, the prison scene is one scene I really, really want to talk about. Bef- but before that, I want to talk about him biting Eddie, and that's how he gets the symbiote. Look, it was either bite yeah. him or suck him off. Those were the two options, and they had to go for the PG thirteen one. Are, are I, we, I, those the only I, two options? Yeah, those I don't think those are the only two options. <laughs> those two. But it, it was it was weird. Like he was like they were just having a conversation right before he's going to be sentenced. And that's it. It didn't fit, in my opinion. Like him getting the symbiote that way, like I could see like, you know, him starting a riot or something and punching Eddie, but Eddie can't have Venom come out. So he gets a little like blood on his fist or something like that, and that's how he gets the symbiote. That would be a little bit better. But just biting him, that feels weird. I'm trying to remember how Eddie got didn't Eddie get bit by somebody in the first Venom movie and that's how he got Venom on him? Like, how no. Did, how did Venom No, he broke to into to Riz Ahmed's know, headquarters and just got I know, it. like, but in those headquarters when he was in, like, the jail cells or whatever for all the people who had the symbiote. She scratched him. him. Yeah, so, like, is that that crazy to believe oh. that just because Cleus Cassidy bit Eddie? I mean... I mean, not really. It's just, it felt weird but they, and like that the guard really just kind of sat back for a minute and did nothing yeah. that's where i was like dude get up go go help yeah. him but but venom transferred from that lady to eddie brock it's that's the one scratch he's yeah. literally a clone yeah the bite was a clone that somehow that's true maybe because of poison <laughs> so that's venom Which, blood of poison. Venom, and so that goes into cletus yeah, yeah. Into carnage oh. yeah so 
but like going into the like his death execution and stuff that was that was haunting which they captured the tone perfectly because i was uncomfortable watching it i was just like oh god this is this man's about to get the death penalty like yeah he's a horrible human being but still and then you know we get the transformation of him into carnage and like when, as soon as carnage bursts through the door after we just see his uh, tendrils flying around best way to introduce someone in my opinion what what Torn- do you think Eric? the tornado was a bit rough at first i was like oh this is cool carnage is spinning around <laughs> Guys. Oh, carnage is spinning around really fast right now that's my uh, favorite carnage power is the fucking tornado. <laughs> so remember that classic was... move from Marvel yeah. versus Capcom four or whatever the fuck. Um, I did like the fact where like uh, carnage just sticks his tongue down some dude's throat and kills him. I'm like, oh, that's that, was that, that, that was brutal. That was hot. That that was brutal. That was um so so hot. I think I have that, kids. I think that was I think that was really cool. Um, but yeah. Um, I thought Woody Harrelson was fine in this. I don't think we needed Woody Harrelson in this, but oh, I, I don't run. Is there anyone else you would have cast as Carnage, though? I don't know. Uh, it's hard, really. And like who? Timothy like, Chalamet. I'm... Hmm. Timothy, Timothy Chalamet. Sh- we don't need him in everything. Good God! Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm trying to put a face with the name. Uh, the dude, dude. that everyone creams their pants over. Dune, call me by your name. Uh, the Dune guy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Paul. Yeah. Paul. His name's Paul. So, um, so yeah, I I don't know who would have been it. I think Woody was just not the right fit for it. I just I don't know. Damn it! The more I'm talking about this, the more I don't like this movie. Shit. Thanks, Welcome Ruben. Welcome to me. This is your fault. I guess I'm gonna be the only one here who really liked it. It's still yeah. an improvement. Well, like we're talking about, like. That I think there's only other one other person I could have seen in the role of Cletus Cassidy, and that it's another Timothy. Uh, I always mispronounce his last name, but Timothy Oliphant. Yes. Oh, Oliphant. Yeah. Because I mean, yeah. he he was a great like kind of serial killer esque character in Scream Two, and I've just I've loved him and everything else I've seen him in. So that would have been a, a good pick, but I think Woody Harrelson did a good job. This cast overall, like did a really good job. And that's one thing I think that stands out among this film, other than like previous attempts at making a more anti villain or anti hero I mean, character. Michelle Williams just like was in and out. She like was not that big of a deal in this movie. And we didn't see enough Dr. Dan and I'm okay with that. Uh, Fire and sound without the sound. Yeah, That's that was weird. Line. And then when when they make Carnage actually say, let there be Carnage, I'm like, oh, no, you guys did not just do that. I was so drunk that I yelled at the top of my lungs. He said the title. <laughs> oh, damn it. I what did we think of Stephen Graham as Detective Mulligan? Who? Just what? Like, dude. The detective who becomes Toxin. Or is teased to become Toxin. Yeah, but they're not in that universe anymore, so who gives a fuck? Uh, I mean, it's it was fine. I mean, there was a lot of casting choices in this movie. I'm like, like also the... Oh my god, I can't remember her name. Naomi Harris? Naomi not Harris. Naomi Harris. I, I yeah, Naomi her. Harris as uh, Frances uh, Barson. Yeah, she was... No, yeah, she was fine. Like, did we need her? She was just the crazy lady who just screamed. No. So, when I first saw her, and I was right, yeah, I, I was like, "That's Tia Delama from Pirates yeah. of the Caribbean." Yeah, and I was, Calypso when Money I was yeah. on the screen. Well, yeah, I mean that is who she really is. Yeah, like I, 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 I thought that was her, and it just didn't click with me until like after the movie. I was just like, "Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's that's you know the Sea Witch." But yeah, I her yeah. Voice crack was bomb weird. from Moonlight. Yeah. I didn't, and I don't know enough about weird. Shriek. So I didn't she really does weird care voices when she doesn't care about the movie. She I, she does weird one, shit. One thing she, that could, like, she could have done without this. She'll film, be though. like garbage. Yeah, this one whole thing movie that, was about, you know, they're wanting to get married. I'm like, oh, my yeah. God, <laughs> take that out. Like, the we best, didn't need the love story. The best part of that whole movie is when Venom turns around and is like, we need sound. He looks at her and just fucking throws her into oh the fucking Oh, my God, that was sound. awesome. <laughs> 
I was like, <laughs> Venom just straight up killed this woman. <laughs> we that, that was the the final fight was like the fight between Venom and Carnage was good, but I feel like could have been better. It just I'm, went all I, over the place. Literally. The CGI was a bit rough there pa- too. Power up the, when he fucking eats the priest's head. <laughs> power up. That was that was good. <laughs> I did enjoy it, even though it was like spoiled in the um, trailer and stuff. I did enjoy the Venom's like, oh shit, no, no, no. What are you doing? What are it's, you doing? Uh, that's a red, the red one. one. <laughs> <laughs> like I was, I was actually chuckling at that. I was like, that's that's good. That feels like a very good approach because you know the he talks about the other symbiotes in the first film, but like doesn't really touch on them. Well, doesn't he say the red ones are the worst ones in the first film? He does. Yeah. If I remember, like, like I, when they're sitting out on the raft or something and like yeah. just in the water, he's like, well, yeah, the red yeah, ones are the worst. He's, he's like, silver ones are bad, but the the red ones are the worst. Which who's the silver old. ones? Riot. That, yeah, it was Riot. Oh, Riot. OK. Yeah. And Riot was the first <laughs> villain, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember much about that movie except for him sitting in a lobster tank, which I'm glad they referenced in this one. <laughs> oh, that was good. That that was really uh, good. But yeah, all I remember is that the dude's name is Riot because I was like, why the fuck wasn't it Carnage? I also um fuck. Like, did you guys notice in the beginning when they're doing like the uh back in the past stuff? It sounded like Woody Harrelson dubbed over his younger actors. Oh no, it was it, both of them dubbed over their voices, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That that was weird. Yeah. Yeah. Th- there's some stuff that could have to be honest, because I was drunk again. I was drunk during this, if you didn't know, but I thought I was hallucinating that because I was like, why would they choose to put fucking 50 year old Woody Harrelson's voice over this clearly 40 year old kid? So do we think that this is I mean, he's only got really five things under his directing belt, but Andy Serkis did a good job with this film for what he was giving Two. No, No, he has five. (laughs) <laughs> he has uh, is, Heavenly uh, Sword back in 2007, which is a video game. Uh, he has Breathe oh, back in 2017. That? Yeah, he was the uh, well, he, dramatic he director. The cinematics. Oh. The cinematics for it. Yeah. I mean, uh, is is it does it count as directing if you uh, direct all the mocap for things? Yeah. I would say so. You're directing something. Yeah. But I, I mean, like as an overall director. Cause I, cause I thought his only, his only overall thing was uh, Mowgli, and then he did this. Uh, it's Venom: What They Carnage, Mowgli: Legend of the Jungle, The Ruins of the, uh, The Ruins of Empires, which was just a TV movie back in 2018. Uh, breathe, and okay. then Heavenly Sword. Yeah. What, what is breathe? Does it say what breathe is? Uh, let me look at it real quickly. It looks like it was a romantic drama between or with Andrew Garfield and Claire Foy. I've never seen it, so I fucking vaguely remember that. Oh damn. I, yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, no, he he definitely I mean he needs to know how to like edit things better. I I never saw Mowgli, but I've not heard anything positive about it. I've watched like, it, uh, didn't care for it. I, I I don't think Andy Circus is like laying all the blame here. It was just a bad script. It was a really bad script. Yeah, uh, the writer for this, Tom Hardy Ooh. wrote this. Did Tom he Hardy write, write this? this? Yeah, he like co. No, he didn't fully write it. He co-wrote it with uh... a story by Tom <laughs> Hardy and Kelly Marcel, where Kelly Marcel was the screenplay. Yeah. Okay, so she wrote the final script. Yeah. yeah. He he just I mean, he just like shouted ideas at her. It was like, what if what if we break up? What 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 if what? Hey, okay. What if his whole thing for living is he eats chocolate and brains? that that was weird the breakup and then he's like going out and attaching himself to other people until he gets to the rave club and he's just like sitting there you know party venom I'm out the eddy closet that was that's that was line, weird guys. that's a line he says i think it was to help differentiate that these are two different entities like venom and eddie are completely different and I guess like like people who share a home together, a married couple, they're living in the same body. So they're going to be arguments probably like, hey, I want the driver's seat. No, I want the driver's seat. Let's do this. Let's do this. Yeah. Let's do this. And, you know, it's messing with Eddie, his personal life, because he's trying to get back on top. Um, mm-hmm. He has a weird alien thing in him. 
and you know his ex woman he loves marrying somebody else so it's probably a lot to take in right now and so i think it just led to a big fight and like with most couples you get into fights Um, and uh it was interesting for sure did we want eddie and Anne to get back together though not really i mean i i'm just speaking like from eddie's point of view it's probably why he's just going through a lot so he and venom are just two horses that don't didn't exist well together and then you know by the end of the movie hey we're perfect for each other like okay we're the lethal protector and in the comics i mean how many people has venom venom actually been attached to because other than eddie and flash thompson because those are the just the two that come to mind mac Gargan, peter peter parker well, I mean, other than like as Venom, not as like Symbiote Suit oh. Spider Man, but like as as Venom, I mean, like, because yeah, like Matt Gargan. Which one's Matt Gargan? Scorpion. Oh, OK. What about like, Michael Morbius? Uh, when he was on Matt Gargan in the Dark Avengers, like he was. Oh, that's right. About as was carnage as he could get without being actually carnage. Like, he was Dark evil, Avengers is right? just a yeah. fucked up storyline, though. So, um, but yeah, Iron Patriot. That's and I I mean I like know there's like the whole like Venom verse thing where he was like attached to yeah. other people. I didn't know if that was actually considered canon though. Like yeah, as a I part of the main verse. Yeah. It is? Okay. I think it is. Yeah, because he's like the elder god or whatever the fuck of the universe now. I, I I think that for me personally, I like it when Venom is more antagonistic rather than anti hero. Like, it's terrifying when Spider-Man is just swinging through the city and Venom just comes up out of nowhere because Peter can't tell where he is. And I think that's we're, more, like, yeah. I we'll don't that mind thought. this Venom. Like, it's fun. I'm glad Venom is getting, you know, movies because Venom is After great. After Spider-Man 3. <laughs> yeah. Like, Venom is great. And I'm glad that people are liking him. Because um, whatever we say about the movie, Venom is fun. Like when Venom's right. out doing stuff, it is fun. Um, yeah. But I don't know where they're gonna go from here. I really don't. I okay. mean, I know where they're gonna go from here. I'm talking about for yeah. like the next Venom movie. I don't know where they're gonna go from here. Well, that is gonna be one of our topics. Is what we'd like to see, but we'll get to that here in a minute. I'm just. I I have a lot. I want to say, and like the more I think about it, the more I'm like, was this movie really good, or did I just get caught up in the hype? I mean, there was hype I, for this movie? For me, there was. Like, as someone okay. who loves Spider-Man and loves the character of Venom and Eddie Brock itself, there's a lot of hype. And I mean, I'm like a kid when I go to see, like, a comic book movie. I, I will bounce in my seat. I will have a good time. And I'll make the most of everything. Hell, that's been me on dates before. Doesn't end up going well. But the more I think about it, the more I'm like, this movie was good but it was more okay than good i just it it disappointed me at every turn and i gave it the benefit of the doubt because like i waited i waited so long to go watch this like i was so confused that people loved it and then like the people that i actually the opinions that i actually care about everyone was hating it i was like oh okay so it's it's going to be that bad but even like going in like i couldn't even imagine how bad it was I will say it met my expectations for what I thought it was going to be. If that makes sense. Because, I mean, I had the bar of the dirt (laughs) and it went past the dirt. (laughs) I mean, that's that's how I was for uh, Fan Four Stick back in 2015 when that film came out. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Well, I went in thinking this movie is going to be the absolute worst thing I've ever seen. And it's going to be an absolute dog shit of a movie. And I was like, it had some cool moments like. Fan four stick is a way worse movie than this. Like, I saw it. So when, like, I actually try, agree with that. When people actually, actually like say like, as I was talking earlier, my brother was saying this is the worst movie he's ever seen. Like, no, you have not seen enough movies. Then. Yeah. Cause like there are worse superhero movies than this. There are worse X-Men movies than Venom. Let there be mm-hmm. carnage. And like, or, I think or, it's just, we're in this time right now when Marvel's got all their stuff. And so Sony's trying to get like their whole verse started um, so they're probably trying to throw a bunch of stuff in the pot right now. And 
I, you just need some good scripts. That's all it is. Cool. That's literally all you got to do is just have a good script and you'll have a good movie. Like that's... I'm trying to remember because I remember seeing an article somewhere where Kevin Feige is like getting in contact with people at Sony, like trying to get well, pretty much the rights to like all of Spider-Man stuff in the MCU, which I don't think will ever happen. I would love to see it happen. happen. That will but happen. As much as I would spend, love for that, it would have to spend billions of dollars just to get Spider Man. Oh, yeah, I know. Not just all of Marvel as a whole. I'm talking just Spider Man. So, well, I mean, everything we can get attached. into, we can, let's just get to the end credit right now, then. Yeah, let's, well, you know, we'll dive into it and we'll, we'll hit other fine points before we uh, close out our final thoughts. That end credit scene was pretty fucking cool, but not what I was expecting to see when he starts talking about the hive mind. Well, it was like a misdirection. Yeah, I didn't know and, was, and they did a good yeah. job with that because, yeah. like, as soon as we saw the Doctor Strange portal flash, and you know, here he is now in the MCU verse, and it's him laying on the bed, and we hear J. Jonah Jameson on the TV with a picture of Peter Parker without his mask, and I'm like, holy fuck, Venom's gonna be in No Way Home. So I think that confirms that the trailer that we saw where there's that dark figure moving when Peter turns around really quickly, that's got to um, be Venom. We were thinking it was Lizard. It's got to be Venom now. It still could be. It's yeah, still there's no be. way Lizard's in No Way Home. <laughs> like that Either Lizard or Scorpion is who I thought it was going to be. Anything. Well, yeah, Scorpion makes sense. But li- li- that dude who played Lizard in uh, Andrew Garfield's movies does not want to have anything to do with uh, superhero movies. But yeah. If I could butt in here for a second. Oh, it, no. Uh, the the figure he's seeing. Is that, that the voice of Tom Hart? How dare you, sir? Don't don't disrespect me like that. The figure um, he's the the figure he's seeing in the the you know glass thing or whatever the hell it is is that dark of room. course. People keep saying it's lizard. Kale, you're definitely right. It's definitely not lizard. Okay, it's yeah scorpion. Thank you very much. Well, it could be venom. Okay, I mean they've teased Scorpion out so much at this point that all the more reason he was in the first give him the movie, you know. Yeah, he's yeah. the main villain. Yeah, so I'd, I I wouldn't be surprised if he shows up. But that was yeah. a joke, Eric. That was a joke. That was a I, I, I was gonna say you want to run that back. <laughs> yeah, that was a joke. I was just messing around. Yeah, I don't care. So so so, Ruben, what, since we have you here, what do you think of the movie? Oh my god, this is probably the worst movie I've ever seen. No, it's not. Nothing. You've seen way worse movies than this. I promise you. Have you seen okay, Fantastic Four? That's a Have great you seen movie. How dare Part you? Two? The 2015? What? Oh, no, no. I thought you were talking about the original 2005. No. I didn't see, actually, Fantastic Four. because I heard. Yeah, then you haven't seen worse movies. You haven't seen god awful movies. Yeah. Eh, I don't know about that. Venom is like... The, the, the no, whole no. part of this movie, they are literally arguing like a married couple for like... It's a bromance. Half of this movie. And that's okay. Like, if that's what you're going for, that's cool. I get it. But, like, <laughs> you literally have another symbiote running amok with a serial mm-hmm. killer. And you decide, yeah, let's just throw in some marital arguments. No, they for sure made the decision in post to be like, no, the better story is Venom and Eddie having a fucking breakup than it is Carnage. Yeah, uh, which is like such a being introduced. It's literally let there be carnage is the subtitle. So why would you not have him as the main part? Well, if they named that before they shot a single second of film, so 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 Ruben is our caller of the day. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, thank you for calling in. No problem. Stay there, um, my friends. But yeah, I it, think that you know, I I definitely clapped when I saw. JJ in the corner on the television mm-hmm. screen. I knew it was happening. Mm-hmm. And so um it's it's wild. Like it's finally and it's weird how Venom said that guy. And then well, I don't know I, if it's I like, like he, he looked at him and like, does he know him from previous or is just like that guy? I don't like that guy just by looking at him. So well, he was talking about it being connected to the hive mind, but Kale, I'll let you share your thoughts first. What did you think of the no, after scene? I just don't I don't think that I think this is another misdirect. I think uh, I think that uh, Disney would rather let go of uh, Spider-Man than, you know, have to deal with Venom or any of the other shitty Spider-Man villains that they have being in the MCU. 
So I think I think it's just it's signifying that Tom Hardy's just going over to Sony and it's not gonna be uh he's not gonna be in the MCU anymore after uh no way. You mean Tom Holland? Tom Holland, yeah. This well no Spider Man. Well you said Tom Hardy, that's why I was like Oh no yeah, Tom Tom Holland, yeah. Okay. Like I, I yeah, I just don't think he's gonna be in it anymore. I think they're just like we we would rather lose this character than have to deal with Amy Pascal and her bullshit for another 20 years. And Avi Arad, which the, like the fucking two ancient dinosaurs of Spider-Man history who have made the wrong decision at every point in the Spider-Man cinematic history are still fucking there. Is Wasn't he fucking the, astounds me. Pushed, uh, Sam Raimi to put Venom in Spider-Man 3 originally? Yeah, and, and then he also pushed for the own, his own Spider-Man universe with the Sinister Six, and that fell through. So fuck him. I'm still sad we never got Andrew Garfield's Sinister Six because that ending at the end of Amazing Spider-Man 2 was still fucking cool. So, sure. Sure. What? Sure. Sure. You you didn't like the, you know, I thought it was cool cool to have, you know, like, oh, look, there's Vulture's wings. Oh, look, there's all that stuff. But then when you talk to that fucking green goblin abomination looking shit yeah i didn't care for the green goblin i did not care for what they did with harry that was a fuck you to green goblin because we didn't even get uh who was it christopher cox that's who was playing that was um norman for what two minutes of screen time Mm -hmm. that that was died that was either way i i I, you guys are like talking about this whole venom and see you thing and i don't think he's gonna be in no way home that much i think it's just gonna show up i don't think he's gonna be in it at all I like, uh, hey, he, there he is. Cool. I just. I, I think he's going to be like a minor part. I don't think he'll be like a main focus. I think he'll be I don't even more. I think he's going to have a speaking part. You think, think we're just going to see him? Yep. I think we're just going to see him. Okay. Because even though this yeah. is a co-led production, like they definitely like you want you want Marvel at the head of this. Alf- Alfred Molina would have spilled the beans about him being in it by now. Bob Holland would have spilled the beans about him being in it. Let's be real. Yeah, it's also true. Or Mark Ruffalo, someone. I, he would have streamed the fucking production meeting. Like, why are you here, Mark Ruffalo, for a Spider-Man production meeting? Oh, is it Hulk in this movie? No. Why, I'm, why I'm, that, that, that's, what, that's what. That's what Mark would have no, said. No, this movie is going to explain why Bruce Banner is not not smart Hulk. <laughs> He's back to being normal white guy. <laughs> Still pissed about that. So we now that we've talked about the after credit scene. Where give me your over the top where you would like to see Venom go from here. And then your normal one. Gail, you can you can go first. I'd like to see uh, Venom become Bane. Um. <laughs> no, I like I just I hope that uh, I hope he shows up in Morbius and then that movie makes no money. Actually, I hope that movie makes all the money so we just get Morbius movies for the next 10 years. I okay just want to that. see the Morbius cinematic universe. More Michael um, Keaton. Yeah. I, yeah, actually, I just, want the, I just want Morbius and Venom to team up. Just, okay just to see that. what that's like. Yeah, just, and then, like, Eddie Brock dies and he goes to heaven and in this universe, Michelle Williams is already dead, so they're happy or whatever. And then, you know... And then Michelle Williams' da- daughter, the the daughter of Heath Ledger and Michelle Williams, becomes the Joker. You good? Ew, you you having fun over there? <laughs> yes, because this movie broke me, and I don't want them to make any more fucking Venom movies. I just want them to. I just I just I just want Sony to stick to video games. Sir Eric, did you, did you come up with something? Um. I don't know. I think we're definitely going to probably get more symbiote stuff. Shocker. And the next one, I think maybe we'll get more hive mind stuff. Symbiote planet shows up in some way, shape or form. But no, I think that's going to happen. Um, I just gobble the gook words. Yeah. I just would like them to like, I don't know, take it seriously. Like you can have fun. Like obviously most of the MCU, like it's a bunch of goofiness, but they actually do take it seriously. And I think that they actually need to get good script writers on this. I was saying this before, like that's true. There is a great character there, but it's been messed up. They're like, I remember when 
and the scene when uh Anne is looking for Venom and he's in Mrs. Chen and I was like, oh no, she's about to come she Venom again, isn't she? And then turns it's out It's my favorite part of both movies. Oh no. Just let oh. her be Venom. Hey, that's that's what I want in the sequel is Michelle Williams playing Venom. Fuck Tom Hardy. I just I would like them to not just go to cash grabs because this is ca- these are cash grabs. Like they're yeah. not great, but I mean, look at it though. I mean, the first movie did so well, specifically outside of the U.S. This movie had the biggest pandemic opening in U.S. and I think in Argentina and in a lot of Latin American countries that had their biggest pandemic opening. Venom is a very popular character, right? And like it actually mm-hmm. deserves really good movies for that, and. I think they, like I said, just take it serious. Uh, maybe get Amy Pascal and Avia Rad out of there. Like, thank you for all you did with, you know, the first, the Sam Raimi trilogy. Thank you. Like, obviously, superhero blockbusters now come from that. Um, but I think I think it's time to get some new blood in there. Because uh, yeah, while you know, Spider Verse is great. I mean, that like. The best thing Sony's got going for right now in terms of movies is Spider Verse stuff, right? And um, I think they need to re- look really long and hard about how they want to do this live action stuff because I'm not expecting Morbius to be good at all. Really, be the best picture of 2022. I'm telling you right like, now. I mean, like I know Jared Leto's a great actor, and I know Matt Smith's going to be playing the bad guy in it. Um, <laughs> I didn't so, even know that. Like, hopefully, what? because last time we thought Matt Smith was going to be playing the bad guy, they, he, he was just he is, like there for five seconds. He is playing the bad he's guy. A, he's okay. a picture. He was a he was so a, he's playing. I forget who he's playing, screen. but I know it's like a Morbius villain. Okay. Um, Although I think he's going to be the actual villain in Last Night in Soho. So I I, I hope I don't think the trailers can cut him out that much. Yeah. I just um, I want them to you know treat it right. Not okay. just like, hey, let's just make our own universe here. Like, no, like you actually have some of the greatest characters in Marvel Comics. Like you have Spider-Man. Yeah. You have the greatest superhero of all time in your pocketbook. Fucking do something good uh, about it. I want I, Venom 3 to start with Aaron Taylor Johnson as Craven the Hunter sniping the fuck out of Tom Hardy. Oh and then God. Michelle Williams becomes Craven. Lady Venom. Yeah. Did what did Craven get cast? Yeah, it's Aaron, yeah, Taylor it's Aaron Taylor Johnson. Oh, I'm okay for that. We did Flesh not talk about coming. That's is he going to be a part of Venom's universe or is he going to be a part? Of... Yeah, yeah, it's it's okay. Sony. It's it's oh, it's Sony an actual role. Craven movie. It's not him just. As a... Yeah. What what's it called now? It used to be it's Sony Spider Man <sighs> universe. I think it was used to be called like Marvel Sony's universe of Marvel characters or something like that. Oh. And then they yeah, realized it's like just oh shit, Spider Man villains. Yeah. Which I'm looking. That's what they have access to. It looks like Matt Holloway's doing the screenplay for this film. So, Matt Holloway. What, what, what have they done? Uh, Matt Holloway has done. That's Iron, he, he was a writer for Iron Man, Punisher Warzone, Men in Black International, Transformers Last Night. Uh, Iron Man 1? Ew. Iron Man 1. He did okay, the screenplay that, for Iron Man 1. That, he's, made, Iron Man, he's made Iron one Man good movie. Punisher Warzone's not terrible, but he is doing the early script for uh, Rise of the Beasts, and he did the screenplay for Uncharted. Which, oh my god, that's, that's in like five months. Yeah. Um, and we still don't have a trailer. It's going to be right. a Game Awards. Yeah. Well, we that's, have a, that's Sony's yeah. new thing, is they're just going to wait till the last possible minute. They'll show it at the Game Awards. That's, that's going to be the big thing. Yeah, I see that happening. Tom Holland's going to be there. So what I would like to see really quickly, um, my over the top, give me fucking Noel. Bring Noel into the Venom verse. Like put Venom in the MCU. I know I know what you're thinking. Like save this for, you know, a couple of years. Do the King of Black storyline, because that would that's, be fucking wow, amazing. That's gonna be a big giant leap from Riot oh, I know. to Carnage to Noel. Like I like think I said, that's that's gonna be that's wild. my big one. That's my big over the top. Well, uh, my what my other idea Venom for this... villains are there? Toxin, Spider Man, Spider Man. Yeah, make Spider Man the villain. Well, because I mean, Venom's more <laughs> of a villain insane. than he is an antihero. No, I say if we if we look at it actually, I mean, like Spider Man is a villain of yeah. Venom technically. So I mean, technically, but, but yeah, I would like to see uh, as my you know my my more tame do the Cult of Carnage. 
resurrect Cletus Cassidy in the next film. And well, they're in a different universe, so he could still be alive. Or that, yeah. But like, I would like to see some sort of Cult of Carnage storyline because we didn't get the carnage I think we deserved. Hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Get the carnage that ate Gwen, that drained Gwen Stacy of her life force, and then she. Oh, and Marvel Ultimate Spider Man. I, I, I don't want to relive that. I, I don't awesome. want to relive. That kind of fucked me up of, because Aunt uh, May finds her. I, I still re- remember being 10 years old and reading that, and I'm like, oh my God, that was my was first awesome. experience with. Oh my I God. Was, and then Peter becomes Carnage a little bit. Oh man, Ultimate Spider Man is so good. Let's just do Ultimate Spider Man story stuff. Let's just do that. I'd be okay with that. I'd be okay with doing an Ultimate Spider Man storyline. I mean, Andrew Garfield's suit in the second Amazing Spider Man like, ha- was the closest to the Ultimate Spider Man suit. So we just get the ending of Amazing Spider-Man 2 again, where he's just sitting at the grave for every day for a year. My friend Casey Johnson, when we went and saw the Amazing Spider-Man 2, right as the web snapped and like her back snap, he leaned over and he goes, high five. And I'm over here crying because I was like, I love Emma Stone and Gwen Stacy's amazing. And he's just like, hi. I was like, fuck off. I know I've probably told that story on here a couple times, but still, fuck off. I love that. That's amazing. I like this person. (laughs) So I think that kind of wraps it up because there's really not much more to say on the film other than it was it was it was OK. It was good. It the was film more didn't have much focused. to say itself in the first place. So I'm surprised we've made it this long. My only complaint, like I said, or one of my big complaints, not my only, but it needed to be at least 20 to 30 minutes longer. They needed more exposition like it was rushed. It was very rushed. I remember sitting there when we got to the chapel. I was like, oh, fuck, we're in the final act. And no, no second act uh, boss fight where Carnage loses everything or Carnage uh, Venom loses everything. No. Ugh. No. Doctor Dan just, came in to save the day. Yeah, it was just him saying, "I actually like Doctor Dan," and it was very stupid. That 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 was the that was no. the boss battle. In all due respect to Tom Hardy's son, don't let him write this. Don't let him write the third Venom movie as supposedly he did this one. <laughs> Tom Hardy have a kid. Yeah, he's got three. Yeah, that's the only oh, reason shit. why he did the Venom movies was because one of his sons loved Venom so much. And he's just like, I have no idea what the fuck a Venom is. And so his kid was like, you can't do it, Dad. So we're blaming you the fuck kid. do it. Yeah. What's Blame, up? blame Tom Hardy's children. Okay. Yeah, do it. Right. <laughs> like, Tom Hardy is not the worst part about these movies. So, I, like, Eric, I agree. Eric. Tom Hardy. Script, Rube. script, script, script. Ruben, I've he got all of it without saying it. <laughs> He no, he didn't story. write. He wrote the he story. He wrote the script like okay, Zack Snyder okay. wrote a, writes a script okay, where he just okay. yells at someone, and then right. someone has to interpret. Hey, his hey, you leave Snyder out of this. All right, my apologies. My apologies. That, that Snyder is a gift to this world. No, Army of the Dead is a fucking piece of goddamn garbage. Do you like, like anything, Kale? <laughs> I like. I like. Uh, I like, like Mario Golf. Justice League. I I loved No Time to Die. I wish I wish I was talking about I'm gonna that. I'm going to see right that now. in an hour. Listen, we might be talking about that later this week. I'll, I'll let you know. I still okay. need to I haven't seen Spectre if that's that says anything. Oh, don't. You you have to see Spectre to see this movie. Oh, I haven't well, seen any of them. I haven't seen Skyfall all the way through, so I mean, you have to watch all the Craig movies to get a, the full experience. I've seen Casino Royal and Quantum of Solace and like the first half of uh Skyfall. Actually, you don't need to see Quantum of Solace to see. Oh, I, I liked Quantum of Solace. So. I like it too. I, I like Casino Royale. Like, still my uh, favorite. Those two. The Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace would have made a perfect Bond trilogy. Because because Casino Royale is like three hours long. So is this movie. So is No Time to Die. It's fucking long, but I loved every second. I love I love that director. I love Carrie Fukunawa. Yeah, let's get him like, in the MCU. Yeah. No Nation. <laughs> I honestly wouldn't mind seeing Daniel Craig in the MCU. No, not Daniel Craig. Ah, oh, damn. Carrie Fukunawa. Yeah. I mean, he he would probably direct the shit out of a Disney Plus show because that's the other niche that he does is he directed all of True, True Detective season one and oh my uh, God, I got Maniac. It. Kale. Well, hey, before we dive into this conversation, let's go ahead and do plugs real quick. <laughs> Just think of it, like Daredevil <laughs> series. From Carrie Fukunawa. Oh my God. Oh my so that God. Would, that would actually be perfect. That would be perfect. I'm calling there. There is a long, there is a long, not to spoil too much, but there is a long take action scene. Actually, there's like three in no time to die that are just so perfectly shot. Like I just, 
like yeah Kerry Fukunawa is a fucking genius anyways save that for a no time to die talk hey Eric where can people find you hey uh, Eric C again on Twitter like I said I got a kid coming like in the next three weeks so I'm very Hell excited yeah. about that oh um, don't, don't let him uh, read Venom or else you know you might have to write a Venom movie that sucks that's fine. I I think I could write a pretty good Venom movie. Um, so I probably could. <laughs> probably could actually um, a good one. But what about the script? So I uh, what did you say, Ruben? I said, what about the script? I, well, I could write a good script. Either way, um, yeah, that's where I'm at. Like I said, it's going to be very hectic. I'm trying to get as much online multiplayer gaming as I can get these next three weeks. Hey. I'm not going to have any of that uh, when Ruby is born. Um, so. Uh, yeah, that's where you can find me. Um, that's all I got. All right. And hey, when does Marvel Monday's initiative come back? Uh, we're going to come back, uh, I think, Eternals. When Eternals comes out. So Eternals comes out on the 5th. Uh, we're probably going to have our first episode back be the 8th, I think, is what we're returning with Marvel Monday. Does it come out on the 5th? Mm-hmm. Yes. First comes out on the day Friday Call of Duty comes November. out. Wow. Yeah, uh, we're going to do that, and then we're going to have That's like right, two episodes like of yeah. Phase 3, and then we're going to be getting into Hawkeye, and then gotcha. we're going to have Spider-Man. Oh my god, I can't wait for that one. When's the What If review? Because you guys are doing just a series review of that, right? I don't know if we're going to have a full episode of What If. I got to talk with Ruben and Christian about that. Um, gotcha. I think we've been doing like those little sprinkle, because I think both of them kind of like fell off What If, so uh, we may just give like our takes oh. like hey what were your favorite episodes this is it so yeah that's that and kale where can people find you uh you can find me at twitter on twitter at kale writer uh on twitch at uh, twitch.tv slash kale writer and then kale del writer on all other socials and uh yeah I'll, hopefully i'll be streaming something this week i don't know yet nice and as always, you can find me at Rich Dolphus on Twitter and also on Twitch at Rich Dolphus. I haven't streamed a lot recently, but I'm going to get back into it because I probably should. I've been slacking on my game time other than just playing Metroid and Final Fantasy recently. So, But for all things media, this has been the Cross Media Show. Have a wonderful night.